The focus of today's discussion is about data management. Data management is used in business or in education, whereas it is also known as statistics. What is data management? It is the science of collecting, organizing, presenting, analyzing, and interpreting numerical data. It refers also to the mere tabulation of numeric information in reports of stock market transactions, or to the body of techniques used in processing or analyzing data. Also, statistics involve sampling method, and sampling method covers how data will be collected. Data management has different types. Number one is descriptive, where descriptive statistics is concerned with collecting, analyzing, organizing, presenting numerical data. The statistician tries to describe or summarize a situation. Likewise, descriptive statistics tries to describe the characteristics of data presented. Therefore, the statistician or the researcher may have conclusion based on reports or data being presented. So it is called the descriptive statistics. Number two is inferential statistics. Inferential statistics is concerned with analyzing the organized data leading to prediction or inferences. It also implies that before carrying out an inference, appropriate and correct descriptive measures or methods are employed to bring out good results. Therefore, in inferential statistics, conclusions may be drawn based on facts and based on series or patterns of observations. The characteristic that is being studied is called variable. It varies across individuals or objects. It includes age, race, gender, intelligence, personality type, attitudes, political or religious affiliation, height, weight, marital status, eye color, and the like. Ibig sabihin, pagka sinabing variable sa statistics, ito yung mga characteristics o ito yung mga bagay na nagkakaiba-iba ang tao sapagkat ang tao ay hindi pare-pareho ng edad, ng itsura, ng kulay, ng kakayahan, ng personalidad. Yan ang tinatawag na variable. There are two types of variable. Number one is qualitative and number two is quantitative. And under the quantitative variable, it has discrete variable and continuous variable. Ano ba ang pagkakaiba ng qualitative at quantitative variable? When we say qualitative variables, it represents differences in quality, character, or kind but not in amount. Like sex, birthplace or geographic locations, religious preference, marital status, eye color, brand of computer purchase, etc. So, ibig sabihin, pag tinawag natin qualitative variables, ito ay non-numeric, hindi siya nabibilang. On the other hand, quantitative variables are numerical in nature and can be ordered or ranked, like weight, height, age, test scores, speed and body temperatures, grades, etc. Quantitative variables can be categorized as discrete or continuous so, pag quantitative variables, ito yung pwede mong bilangin. Ito yung it involves numeric or numbers or any characteristics that can be counted. On the other hand, quantitative variables can be discrete variable or continuous variable. Discrete variable are variables whose value can be counted using integral values. The examples are number of enrollees, dropouts, deaths, number of students in a classroom, etc. Therefore, when we say discrete variable, these are the variables that can be counted exactly. So, you may exactong bilang. Unlike the continuous variables, which can be assumed any numerical value over an interval or intervals, it can yield decimal or fractions like height, weight, temperature, and time. So, tulad yung height natin, hindi naman yan pwedeng bilangin kundi gagamit tayo ng 
meter o kaya ng scale tulad din ng weight. So, kailangan tayong timbangin, hindi siya po pwedeng basta lang bilangin. So, yan ang tinatawag na continuous variables. So, gagamit tayo ng measurement just to determine what are the characteristics of the sample. Variables may also be dependent and independent. Dependent variable is a variable whose value is being predicted while independent variable is the predictor. So we have here an example for dependent and independent variable to predict the amount of sunlight on the growth of a certain plant. Dito, ang tinatawag na independent variable is the amount of sunlight and the dependent variable is the growth of a certain plant. Dahil, yung paglaki ng halaman ay depende doon sa amount ng liwanag o ng araw na nakukuha niya. So dito, ang tinatawag, ulitin ko, ang tinatawag na independent dito ay amount of sunlight and the dependent variable is the growth of the plant. Example number two is to evaluate the effect of using computer to the performance of the students. So, alin dito ang independent variable? Ang independent variable dito is using computer. At ang dependent variable is the performance of the student. So, ang predictor natin dito ay yung using computer. And the outcome, yun yung tinatawag na dependent variable which is the performance of the students the primary element of uh, data management is called the data wherein data is a collection of observations on one or more variables it is also a factual information such as measurements or statistics used as a basis for reasoning discussion or calculation also data is an information in numerical form that can be digitally transmitted or processed. Also, data is the raw material which the statistician works. It can be found through surveys, experiments, numerical records, and other modes of research. Data can be primary and secondary. The primary data refer to the information which are gathered directly from the original source or which are based on direct or first-hand experience. Secondary data refer to information which are taken from published or unpublished data which are previously gathered by other individuals or agencies. So, ibig sabihin, pag primary data, ito yung tinatawag na first-hand information. Ito yung ikaw ang nag-collect, ikaw ang nag -collect. Whereas, the secondary data ay gumamit ka ng information na una nang kinolekta ng iba. There are four scales of measurement of data. These are nominal or categorical data. Number two is ordinal data. Number three is interval data. And number four is ratio data. And what is nominal data? Nominal data use numbers for the purpose of identifying membership in a group or category. Examples of this are electrical consumption, residential, commercial, industrial, government, others. So ito, madalas natin nakikita sa mga forms. So pipiliin mo lang doon if you are categorized to number one. So pipiliin mo residential. If you are categorized for commercial, pipiliin mo ang number two. Next is gender of NUST. So, pipiliin mo doon, halimbawa, number 1 is for male, number 2 is female. So, yan yung tinatawag na categorical data. Ordinal data connote ranking or inequalities. Example, grades. Uh, number 2, socioeconomic status, low, medium, or high. So, ito yung order. Tulad dito, intelligence, above average, average, below average. Ano pa? First, second, third. So, it is also an example of ordinal data. Another example of ordinal is good, better, best. So, may tinatawag na ranking. Interval data does not only include greater than and less than relationships, but also has a limit of measurement that permits us to describe how much more or less one subject or object possesses than another. No true zero, which means zero, is not really nothing. For example, Fahrenheit temperature scale 
0 degrees Fahrenheit is colder than 5 degrees Fahrenheit. Ibig sabihin dito, pagka sinabi mo 0, hindi ibig sabihin talaga ay walang kahulugan because the freezing point is 0 degrees centigrade. So, 0 has significant value. Another scores on test as a measure of knowledge. A score of 5 is better than 0 score. So, ibig sabihin, meron din significance kahit sabihin natin 0 yun. Another example of interval data ay yung tinatawag na temperature. So, minsan pagka sa mga news, yung mga weather bulletin sinasabi na ang ating temperatura ay aabot hanggang 30 to 37 degrees Celsius or centigrade. So, yun yung tinatawag na interval data. How about ratio? Ratio data is similar to interval data but has an absolute zero and multiples are meaningful. For example, number one, election votes. So, halimbawa, uh, one against two. Merong teacher, teacher and student ratio. If we have a ratio of one is to 40, meaning one teacher also equivalent to 40 students. Another example, average daily delivery of 1,000 packages per day. So, ang ating ratio dito is 1 is to 1,000. Another example is the ratio of male against female. So, according to research, ang ratio nun is 1 is to 3. Ibig sabihin, 1 male for every 3 female. So, 1 is to 3. And these are the basic ideas about data management or about statistics. Thank you very much.